This is the scene at the intersection between Cote Road and Pagoda Road. This general area is known as the Pitacote Junction. Facing the camera is Pagoda Road. Pitacote is a subtown of Sri Jayawadhanaprakote, commonly known as Kote, which is the administrative capital of Sri Lanka. It belongs to the Colombo district and the western province of Sri Lanka. Less than one kilometer from here southward is the location of the subject of this video, which is the historic and archaeologically protected Kote Raja Mahaviharaya. But before heading to that site, let's take a little time to take a look at another historic, archaeological monument located right at the Pitakote Junction. This is the Pitakote Gulumbalamara Dos House or Wayside Rest dating back to the period of the Kote Kingdom of Sri Lanka, AD 15th to 16th century. The structure was originally situated about seven feet toward the road from its present position, to which it was relocated due to the widening of the road by the Road Development Authority. According to the archaeology department notice you just saw, it is 20 feet long by 15 feet wide and stands on 10 stone pillars. It is said that it provided a wayside rest to travelers to Kote and the temple. The Kote Temple was the main religious center for the Kote Kingdom during the 15th century, and was built under the patronage of King Parakramabaha VI, AD 1412-1467, according to the poetic literature of the era. The temple is said to have had a three-story temple of the tooth, a stupa, a bodhi tree, an image house and a chapter house. It is called a Raja Mahaviharaya on account of both having received the patronage of the king and having housed what is believed to be the sacred tooth relic of the Buddha. After the downfall of the kingdom, the temple suffered destruction first during the Portuguese period and then the Dutch period, at which time it was completely destroyed. For nearly one and a half centuries the temple was engulfed by a jungle. In 1813, the Buddhist monk Dharma Kirthi Sri Buddha Ratkitha found the ancient temple in ruins and rebuilt it, partly utilizing the ruins of the ancient temple. The ruins consisted of parts of the stupa, the foundation of the image house, the Kufragama temple, and of some stone pillars. The front perimeter wall and the main entrance to the temple that you see now are modern constructions. The stone pillars that you see now in the foreground are ruins of the ancient temple. The stupa is a modern construction.
This is the Bamanagay, literally, the House of Brahmins and it is an archaeological monument. According to a source at the temple, Brahmins visiting the temple from India meditated in this chamber in ancient times. It is largely reconstructed. What you now see is the Kufragumma Temple, also an archaeological monument. Its present form is a reconstruction. We are now passing the image house on the left, which was built in the 19th century by the monk Buddha Rakitha, utilizing ruins from the ancient temple. We will look at it in more detail after we have finished this tour of the temple premises. What you now see is the famous Na tree of the temple, ironwood tree in English. We will look at it also more closely at the end of the tour.
This is the pond in which the temple elephants are bathed and washed. At the time of filming, the pond was drained of water. However, I was able to capture footage of him being bathed on a subsequent visit, when the pond was refilled with water. Let us now take a close look at the ironwood tree, which is situated within the premises of the temple you see right now. Locals worship this ironwood tree as a sacred tree. According to local folklore, Prince Upamal, the adopted son of King Parakramabaha VI, had made a vow before this tree before he departed to Jaffna to bring it under the control of the Kote Kingdom after its ruler had refused to pay tribute to Parakramabaha, who was the last king to unite and rule the entire island. Now we come back to the image house, which was built in the 19th century. It is rectangular in shape and 40 feet long by 30 feet wide by 40 feet high. There is an open veranda facing the north, and its roof is supported by eight pairs of pillars. The image house consists of two sections, an outer hall and a middle mandapia or pavilion. The outer hall runs around the middle pavilion and has two entrances at each end of the house, as you can see in the picture. The middle pavilion is accessed through two entrances in the middle, and is divided into an outer and inner chamber. The outer hall contains, among other things, sculptures depicting the 28 Buddhas and Jataka stories. They all seem to be of modern origin.
There are two entrances to the inner chamber from the outer chamber and over each is a crest. What you now see is the crest over the left entrance, we shall see the other crest shortly. The walls of the outer chamber of the middle pavilion are adorned with sculptures and Kandyan era paintings belonging to the southern tradition and depicting mainly Jataka stories. The inner chamber includes several Buddha statues, which includes a reclining Buddha 36 feet long. <laughs> 